Bob Nagy here, AB5N, with another interesting piece of equipment, the TPI-1001B RF signal generator. It's made by an engineer down in Austin, Texas, and for the price of a good handy talkie, you can get yourself a signal generator that generates signals between 35 megahertz and 4.4 gigahertz. This thing will operate as a standalone CW beacon on 6, 220, 2 meters, 450, 1.2, 2.4, 3.8, standalone. And it also has an accompanying software program that does an amazing array of things. Now, what's really nice about this is not only can you test bandpass filters, tune-up receivers, all the stuff you'd want to do in a shack, uh, resonate an antenna, but it does so many things that you'll end up learning a lot about RF engineering by using this box. And once you program it up, whatever the last thing you've done with it is, it stays in there, and you can just take it out in the field, not hook to a computer, press a button, and it'll start doing it, like being a CW beacon or whatever, going up to the repeater site to test something, so you don't have to have the PC with it. Let's take a look at its uh, functions. So let's take a look at the box's I.O. Starting on the bottom right, we have, of course, the RF output connector. It's a nice little gold-plated SMA. has a frequency range on it. Above that, you have two buttons on the front panel, and that is your RF on and off, and a customizable control button so you can be out in the field and start it to do something, depending on what you've set it uh, in the menus on the programming software. Above that, a couple of LEDs on the front panel, your RF on, showing that RF is coming out, and of course your power LED. The trigger output is another one of those configurable things where you can have this unit send out a logic level to do other things, to make other equipment do certain things, depending on conditions you set inside the synthesizer. Top right, we have the RF detector input. And this is also an SMA, and this is used in conjunction with a directional coupler, normally, to check reflected signal levels coming back, SWR, things like that. Now let's start with the ports on the bottom left of the unit. We start with a 10 MHz external reference in. Say you've got a GPS locked clock. I have one, they're inexpensive now, and you can put it into here for absolute frequency accuracy. The thing does have a very good crystal oscillator in it, usually not necessary, but if you have one, you, you might put it in here. Right above that, we have the FM input, and you can see it goes from 100 millivolts to 10 volts. You can put all kind of modulating signals in here and create all kinds of RF signals coming out of it. Above that, we have our USB connection, and this is powered by the USB connector. So as soon as you plug it into your laptop, it powers the item up. Or you could pop it into an external battery pack, one of those chargey packs, and run it out in the field for a long time. It draws very little current. Above that, we have a 10 megahertz reference output. That means that that reference clock that you popped in has a buffered output, say, if you wanted to loop it through and use it on your transceiver at the same time as this thing. And last, at the top left, an auxiliary input. And this is that you can trigger things that the synthesizer does depending on outside signals coming in. The 101B is controlled by an amazing piece of software called the TPI Link software, and that's included for free. You can see on its main page here that you set your frequency, you set your DBM level output, you've got memories for both of those for all the common frequencies you normally use and levels you might be using, so you can jump to them really quick and you can increment and decrement those values with little clickers here. Also, you can check your external reference or internal reference as far as your, if you're putting a GPS clock in from the outside. and you can turn the RF on and off from that main tab. You see we have a lot of tabs here though, and each one of them does a lot of different functions. We're not going to go into every function you have here, but if you're interested, go over to the TPI site, and there is an extensive video showing the functions of each one of these tabs. I'll show you some of the more important control tabs here. The modulation one is where the internal modulator allows you to set modulating the RF carrier in different ways. Here, FM-wise, we'll put 1,000 hertz in there. And it will go ahead and show you the waveform that you've created. And then on the right, we have the beacon controls where we can go ahead and pop in beaconing text message. And we can put the speed on the bottom here, the dit time. That'll be the words per minute. And also on the top right, we have modulation scripting. We can actually create a completely custom FSK modulation sequence, say if you're using it to access a piece of equipment and need a certain code sequence to get into it. And on the bottom right you can see you can run your beacon sequence of text continuously or a number of times or one time. It'll even allow you to increment the frequency a certain amount each time the CW beacon is sent. I told you this thing is amazing.
Now signal generators don't put out a lot of power. This one puts out 10 milliwatts maximum, but that's not a problem if you want to set up a beacon because now online you can buy these little broadband power amplifiers. Here's one that'll boost it up to 3 watts, and I think it was $15 and covers up to 700 megahertz with a heatsink. So what could the average ham use it for? Well, remember, it covers all the bands between 6 meters and 3.8 gigahertz. So you can test and tune antennas. That means SWR, reflected power coming back, change the antenna, do another sweep, have multiple sweeps on the screen at the same time. And you can test and tune all types of RF filters, bandpass filters, low pass, high pass, uh, cavities for repeaters, etc. And you can test and tune receive preamps all through all of those ranges. We use a lot of preamps up in the high ranges. Of course, you can tune RF amplifiers amplifiers, and you can do coax loss test at any frequency, plus that bonus of it's a CW beacon as well on any of those bands. Now because this piece of gear wasn't designed specifically for amateur radio, it's more of a professional piece of gear, let's take a look at the features it has that are professional features. It not only scans frequency ranges, but it also does level range scans, which is nice if you want to see how low a receiver could perform. It's calibrated to typically 0.6 dB, or let's say less than a dB variation of output over its full range of frequencies. So you know you're going to be pretty darn close when you set that output level. It's got very low jitter. That means the signal is very pure coming out. And today, with the radios we've got, you want to start with a really clean signal when you're checking things. This also has features where it subtracts out your connecting cable and connectors from the final calculation. So, you know, you got a half a dB loss in each one of those connectors. Your jumper cable's coming out of the thing going to, say, an antenna or a piece of coax. Well, this will subtract their effect out before it gives you the final reading. And you can use it on the bench or out in the field on a little USB battery pack. And you press that one customizable button, it'll start doing whatever you want it to do. It has an extremely wide range of features, which we will not cover all of here, but you can go to the TPI site and go ahead and take a look at the longer videos. And these guys are extremely responsive to upgrade ideas. So just like a company like Flex, uh, you come up with a good idea, you know, call them up, email them and say, boy, I really would like to have this feature or function, and likely it'll be in the next revision of the free firmware upgrades. Here's a typical setup you'd use for testing a piece of unknown coax. We're just putting little jumpers and adapters going from the SMAs to the piece of coax. So you just set your frequency range in the boxes, hit start for scan, it scans across the frequencies, and then when you put your cursor over the scan you can see the exact loss at any given frequency in your scan range. And you can do the same thing checking antenna resonance, but here we're going to look at the VSWR. There's our scan, and we just put our cursor over it, and we can see the SWR at any given frequency. And here are multiple scans on the screen at the same time. So say you change something about the antenna or bandpass filter in this case, rescan it, and you can see the traces right next to each other as you try to get the antenna or filter exactly where you want it. I may as well show you the most complex setup you'd have, which is a directional coupler that just has an input and output, but has a side connector that samples a little bit of the RF, so it comes out and goes into that RF detector input for showing reflected power. You can buy these directional couplers on eBay relatively inexpensively that cover different frequency ranges. Most of your test hookups are going to be extremely simple, like this bandpass filter. It's going from the RF output through the filter and back in the RF detector input. Now for coax test, same thing, RF output through the coax and back in the RF detector input. Scan across your frequencies and check that loss. Now for receive preamps, you put them in line the same way and start feeding them a little RF, tune them up, watch the output, see how much gain you have, peak them. Or you can put an attenuator in line if you think the output's going to be too much for that RF detector input. The only one that's a little more complicated is using the directional coupler to test antennas so you can see the reflected power coming back and plot your VSWR. Let's take a quick look at the front over here. We can see we have the two little push buttons turning the RF on and off, and the other button is customizable to whatever you want this thing to do when you're out in the field not connected to a PC. Now we've been offered a lot of antenna analyzers lately, and I bought what I thought were the two best ones. But what I found out is that ones that do the plotting, graphical plotting, do not check coax loss. And the ones that check coax loss don't have the graphical plotting. This one does both. And it's capable of doing so many other tests that we can actually use. Bob and Phil over at TPI have a number of signal generators. This is just one of them. So go over and check what they have to offer. Now there you have it. Really an amazing piece of gear. And the best thing I found really was that I learned a lot by using this. 
because going through the software you find all the things that this thing can do and then you realize oh I could be testing that with this something I've never thought of doing or using it for a, another function in the, in the shack but it is a piece of gear that you'll really learn from and I, I really had a good time working with the guys down in Austin and I think you'd have a, a great time using this piece of gear. Till next time take care. Thank <laughs> you.